Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bison Basketball Show. I'm Brian Sean. The North Dakota State men's and women's basketball teams opened conference play at home, splitting a pair of games at the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. Both squads looking to get back on track hitting the road to Omaha this past week. The Bison men won in Omaha last season, but slowing down the Mavericks in this contest would be difficult. Former Nebraska Mr. Basketball Jared Samuelson back in his home state, set up by Jordan Horn for the open three. Samuelson two triples and eight points on the night. North Dakota State would battle back and take the lead on a Vinny Shahid three-pointer with eight minutes left in the first half as both teams continued to shoot it well. The Mavericks would answer with a 12-0 run as Zach Jackson scored seven straight points, including a couple of tough step-back jumpers. He finished the game with 16 points. The Bison would close the gap before halftime. Dengu with a hustle play, keeping the ball alive and taking it inside following his own miss for two. He had 14 off the bench. Later, Rocky Cruiser attacking the rim, gets it to drop plus the foul, his first basket of the game as NDSU trailed by nine at halftime. Cruiser would continue to get rolling in the second half, scoring 11 points in the final 20 minutes, including this and one off the feed from Ward. Shahid would knock down another three from the corner to get the lead back to single digits. The Bison were 13 of 26 from long range overall, but the Mavericks would go on a 22-4 run behind the hot shooting of Mitch Hahn. He was 8 of 12 from the floor and scored 20 points, a game high, as Omaha led by as many as 26. NDSU tried to rally late as Ward knocks down another three. He had 17, but Omaha would shoot 57% and win it 90 to 77. The Bison dropping to one and two in Summit League play. The team returned home to host Dickinson State in their final non-conference game of the season and jumped out to a 14-4 lead. Vinny Shahid finding a cutting Rocky Cruiser for the lay-in. Later, Tyson Ward would take it himself backing down his defender and going to work inside, finishing 4-2 off the glass. NDSU had 54 points in the paint against the Blue Hawks. Two of those coming from Dangu as he runs the floor for the lay-in. Shahid had a game-high six assists. Two true freshmen able to get some minutes off the bench as Sam Greasel finding a cutting Jackson Notek for the lay-in. Notek scored seven points on the afternoon. The Bison would race out to a 33-11 lead as Jarius Cook hits the corner three. He also added seven points off the bench as NDSU takes a 38-25 lead into the locker room. In the second half, the Bison would turn up the defensive pressure. Jordan Horn, one of NDSU's seven steals as he takes it all the way in for two. Horn added 11 off the bench. DSU would continue to battle. Trayvon Hamilton had 13 points and two assists, one to Sean Stoltz for the lay-in, but the Blue Hawks limited to just 36% shooting. As Ward puts the Bison up by 30 points midway through the second half, knocking down the three, he finished with a game-high 16. Gu would notch another double-double with 13 points and 11 rebounds. All 11 players scored for North Dakota State as the team shoots 59% from the floor to pick up its seventh victory of the season. 85-53 the final, a boost the Bison will hope prepare them for the road ahead. I think it, it gives us a chance to kind of bounce back from a loss at uh, Nebraska Omaha, kind of build our confidence up. Um, obviously, they're a really good and talented NAIA team. Um, we just want to come out here, build some confidence, play the right way, do what we're best at. I think our energy is one big thing. Um, we bring our energy like we did in the second half. We kind of lost that in the end of the first half, one of the uh, second half. So I think our energy and confidence and talking on defense will be a big thing going into the rest of the season. But guys that haven't been in the rhythm, it gives them a chance to get a rhythm. It gives our young guys some chance to get some experience, uh, just in case we need them in moments and the summer league play. And it, it, overall, it just gives us you know a chance to come out of the team and build chemistry. It helps us find ourselves defensively. It helps us find our culture. Um, you know, it gives us some time to practice. You know, see other teams and see what other teams are doing in the summit. Um, it gives us a little bit of a break, uh, some more to speak mentally, not physically. Sunday's game was also a homecoming of sorts for Dickinson State head coach Josh Vaughn. He is a former North Dakota State guard that played for the Bison from 2005 to 2010 and was a member of the coaching staff up until 2015. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, anytime you get a chance to come back to where you, you know, went to school, your alma mater, got to take that opportunity. And, uh, you know, we played okay today, but it, it was a lot of fun being here. I know every day is a chance to compete and get better. Obviously, playing a team, a Division One team for us, is um, they're a lot more physical and bigger than we are, so it's harder for us to do things that we normally do. So um, we got to take that opportunity as far as cutting hard and getting open and doing those things that we want um, to do just to better ourselves and to get better for our team. 
stay with us after the break. And DSU men's coach Dave Richmond is in studio to break down the past week and look ahead to a meeting with Western Illinois. That's after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by NoDAC Insurance Company and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Joined now by North Dakota State men's basketball coach Dave Richmond. NDSU playing three league games in five days and then getting a little break and playing one more non-conference game, I guess, uh, to try to fill in the gaps just because of how weird the schedule was, Dave. That, that's part of it in the Summit League, but that makes it unique for you guys to have to try to piece a schedule together. Yeah, absolutely, and you're, you're dealt the cards that you're dealt, and so we felt it was important to kind of keep into as much of a rhythm and routine as possible, and that's why we put that Dickinson State game where we had it on Sunday, and it was good to get out there and see Josh Vaughn and take care of some business and keep into a routine and as we continue to progress forward. After the, the two hard-fought games at home, one was a win, you know, one was a last-second loss, and then a couple of days later having to turn it around in Omaha, how did, how did you manage that with your guys, and how do you feel like they did? Because that was their first true road contest in the league. Yeah, I, I think with anything, and with a young group, there's experiences, and, and there's new experiences, and, and I was very pleased with the way our guys battled, and you know, John Conchar had a special performance in that second half. Otherwise, we're 2-0 and at the t time going into that Omaha game. And, and I think when you go into that Omaha game, you know it's going to be tough. It's on the road. Omaha was coming off a home loss against ORU, and so we knew it was going to be even tougher. And, and you could tell it was a new experience for our guys, a conference road game. And, and the way we started the game, and in particular the way we started the second half, you know, wasn't going to uh, push you over the hump in a road game. And we've got to learn from those things and get better as we, as we go forward. Yeah, and you had talked about Omaha, a team that had played much better here the last few weeks yeah. and certainly uh, was motivated in the, in the home game against you guys. To come back, though, and play a game against Dickinson State just to get the guys back on the home floor again because you have another home game coming up, probably a good time for that game to happen. Yeah, again, it was, it was, it was vital, too. We were able to get a lot of guys through, um, see some things, get some... A guy like Sam Grease, get him up to over 20 minutes as he's back into his second game and he proceeds to continue to get better as we continue to go forward. Um, and, and, and it was just it was just what we felt was the best interest of our program. You know, you go back two years ago when we were rolling seven and one in league and, and hit a bye week and you're feeling, ah, we can catch our breath. And that takes you out of your comfort zone. And, and I think rhythm and routine is such a big deal here in college athletics and for us, college basketball. I know part of this was trying to get some guys back healthy again, how, how important that is. And Sam is coming back. I know you talked about his minutes going up, and hopefully you know, he continues to progress. Cam Hunter at some point would hopefully come back from this uh, wrist injury he had. And at that point, at least you have your full squad and kind of determine what matchups work where at. It's got to be a nice luxury to hopefully have at some point here. Yeah, we, we, we you know, I've talked about this a couple of times now, is, is we knew it was going to be an early battle um, because of some youth and because of the tough schedule. And then you throw in the adversity of having two of your top seven, eight guys out, you know, it kind of sets you back a little bit further. But you can see that on the horizon getting closer and closer to that. And uh, as much as we, you know, wear the results, it's more about the process. And that process, a lot of the time right now, is getting some key guys healthy and getting them back into, again, rhythm and routine on the court. You know, one thing that at least you do have, Dave, going into the last couple of months of the season is a lot of guys that have played a lot of minutes. So you, you can kind of pick and choose, you know, where to slide some guys in. So at least everybody has some experience going into the last couple of months. Well, we knew going into this, our depth and versatility was going to be a strength of ours. And I think it's also helped us manage in an extent some of the injuries that we've um, that we were able to uh, overcome because because of because of our depth and versatility but I also think going forward that you know it, it's important for me to get our guys and get the right guys on the right on, on the floor at the right time and, and that means some tough decisions of, of limiting some minutes for some other guys uh, but again I, I've used the words a couple of times rhythm and routine it's also a rhythm and routine to when their minutes are coming and where they are and and what's expected of them from when they're out there and so as we continue to get healthier and we get our, our core guys back into the rotation uh, you're going to see some things tighten up and from a rotation standpoint for what we as a staff feel is in the best interest to move our program forward. Real quickly Western Illinois coming in uh, another club that's going to be hungry to try to get a win yeah. after you know a kind of a topsy-turvy roller coaster starts the season but you know, it, it continues. You know, every game is big at this point. Absolutely. And you got a guy in with a presence like Brandon Gilbeck down low who makes it challenging at the rim. Um, Kobe, Kobe Webster, remember what he did to us in the first half last year here. 
Um, and then we went out to their place, and a guy like Isaac Johnson, who can really score the basketball, um, th they got us there. And so, I mean, it's conference. I mean, I, I get no other explanation than it's conference play. And so you have to be locked in. But I think that the important part is you have to be locked in and attacking the process here, um, you know, in your preparation, in your practices, in your film sessions, in, in your scouting reports, and because every possession is so big in conference play. All right, Dave. Thanks, as always, for the time. We appreciate it. Good luck Thursday. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Stay with us here on the Bison Basketball Show. The North Dakota State women's team went on the road to Omaha as well this past weekend. We'll recap that and check in with Marn Walseth after this. Welcome back. The North Dakota State women's basketball team had a whole week to prepare for its first conference road game of the season at Omaha, a team that swept the Bison last season. The Bison looking for their first ever victory at Baxter Arena. Down 7-0 early, Riley Nudell getting the feet inside and scores. She had 12 points off the bench, but the Mavericks extend the lead to double digits early in the second quarter. Kylie Coulter would fire up the three and bank it in to put Omaha up 25-11. But North Dakota State would respond with a 14-0 run. Marina Fernandez hitting her only three of the game to get it started. Later, Tyra Spencer would also hit from long range thanks to a very friendly bounce at the rim. She added seven points, five rebounds, and four steals were tied at 25. Just before halftime, Rayanna Carter pulling up and knocking down the jumper. She scored 16 for the Mavs, and it's a six-point game. In the third quarter, Michelle Geislerova made her first three-pointer of the contest, but was only four of 19 from the floor overall. Emily Dietz also in double figure scoring with 10 points and five rebounds. The three point play cuts the lead to 10. Sofia Javalovic would also convert a three point play with just over six minutes left in the fourth quarter, which would again keep the Bison within striking distance. But Omaha would close out the game strong, scoring 26 points in the final quarter. Elena Pilakuta, the offensive rebound and put back, and the Mavs go on to win it 78-61. The Bison were just 5 of 24 from three-point range as Omaha shot 50% in the second half. We now welcome in NDSU women's basketball coach Marn Walseth to the set uh, to talk about the Bison women's game at Omaha this past weekend. And Marn, uh, we were just talking that you had a good week of practice leading up until that game and then got down there and some things didn't go your way. How would you kind of take us through the last seven days? You know, I really thought that uh, through our individual workouts and our team practices last week, strides were made. Um, strides were made in playing for each other and fighting through a little bit of fatigue with a little bit of grit. Um, we had a fantastic Christmas celebration um, also leading up to it. Uh, and then we go down to Omaha and it really wasn't the same group. Um, so there's still some soul searching to be had, um, but at the same time, it's our group. They love each other. They play hard you know, for each other. So we're going to keep plugging. And now as you come back uh, and kind of get right back to it again, all of a sudden you're back on your home floor again. And I don't, it wasn't that long ago you were here, but it still feels like it was a while ago because of the break that you had from conference games one and two to conference game three and now to conference game four against Western Illinois. Is, that, is this a good time to have some extended breaks earlier in January before school gets going, or how would you describe it? I think it is. You know, there's a bit of – balance in our schedule there's a bit of unbalance in our schedule at the end of the day everybody's fighting some of the similar uh, inconsistencies with the schedule so um you know having two games in, a, in, a, in two weeks gives us a lot of practice time so you know here we go starting school again on tuesday getting back back into that routine getting our practice players back to have uh, more spirited more competitive practices that will help us as well uh, and then we're yes we're welcome we're happy to be welcoming western here on friday in another home game and as you get to this point in the year, too, this is where you got to try to push kids through, you know, some of these tough, I don't know what you want to call it, roadblocks or whatever that they have, whether it's physical or mental, whatever it may be. Do you do the, more of that in individual workouts or more in a team setting? or How do you balance the two between those at this point in the year? I think there's a little bit of both, but certainly in our team setting, it's, you know, we're not tired. We get to play basketball. There's plenty of kids who are doing other things, maybe have to work full time to pay for their schooling. You know, we get to do this. So let's enjoy it because there are long days. There are tough days. There are days you come into the gym and the sun's out and you go out of the gym and, you know, the sun's already set. Uh, but it's embracing that, that we're just going to keep grinding and this is fun. We, we've chosen to do this and let's enjoy it. Western Illinois coming to town um, this weekend. A team that will test your fatigue because <laughs> they love to get up and down the floor and um, they almost force you at times to play their pace. 
In some ways, this, I guess, is going to be a good test to see where your team is at going forward as well. It is. You know, Western's a unique team, uh, unique on offense and unique in the style of defense that they play. So this will be a good challenge for us in how can we continue to work and control the pace that we want to play while also rebounding. I think the dictating the pace of play and, and controlling the boards will really dictate who wins the basketball game on Friday. Well, thanks as always for the time, time Marn. We appreciate it, and uh, good luck against the Leathernecks coming up here on Friday. Thank you. Marn Walsett joining us here on the Bison Basketball Show. Stay with us. One of the lone seniors, well, the only senior on the Bison women's roster this year is Marina Fernandez. We go one-on-one -on -one with her after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by No DAC Insurance Company and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back. The North Dakota State women's basketball team has only one senior on the roster this season, and she is only in her second season with the program. Marina Fernandez came to Fargo from Casper Community College in Wyoming and is now a team captain for the Bison. This week, we go one-on-one -on -one with the Barcelona, Spain native. All right, time to go one-on-one -on -one with Marina Fernandez, the lone senior on the North Dakota State women's basketball roster and also a captain. And only in your second year, what was it like to be named captain of the team after only being here for about 14, 15 months? Well, that was very important to me. I didn't expect it at all after just being one here, like one year here at NDSU. It just meant a lot to me because that meant that like all my team, teammates trusted me to hold, in, like, to hold them accountable and like just being more confident on the floor, like being vocal and stuff, that, was, that meant a lot to me. So, it's just like one more reason to give my best every day and make sure that like we're on the same page and that we perform at the best level we can. And unfortunately for you, you had a pretty significant injury that happened right in the middle of last season. You missed the last six weeks and this is an injury that really lingered for a while and you weren't fully cleared to come back until late August. How difficult was that for you? You're so used to playing basketball all the time and then you really couldn't probably do everything physically yeah. that you wanted to. Yeah, it was really hard. I got hurt at the beginning of February and it was just really hard to come back. Like it was my ankle and I lost all my motion. I couldn't move my ankle at all. And it was just rest and time, patience. And I, it, was, it was just really frustrating for me to just like be on the sidelines, be on the bench, just cheering for my teammates, which I mean, I'm always there for them, but it's just really hard to just watch from the outside. It makes you value just the opportunity to be on the floor and get your best every time. And as you go through school and kind of get through everything, you're now still working towards your undergraduate degree, which is an exercise science and a minor in psychology. What kind of went into your thought process of making those kind of your focuses here is from an education standpoint? Well, I was just really interested in both um, subjects like exercise science. I don't know. I just thought that it was really cool to like get to understand like how our body works especially like playing basketball or like being an athlete like our bodies are just so important and I don't know I just think that it was really cool especially with injuries working with injuries and getting athletes back you know like I thought that that was just really cool and psychology I've always thought that like that's super interesting and um, especially like I really like sports psychology so I feel like they're both like related to like what I'm doing so I just thought that it would be really cool too. One thing that's unique about North Dakota State's women's basketball team is you talk about being vocal and trying to get everybody vocal, but a lot of people speak a lot of different languages because you have players from all over the world. What's it been like getting to know, you know, and make a bunch of friends, getting to know a bunch of women from all over the place that are here? I mean, I'm really enjoying it. Right now it's five of us. I, we have Raquel from Spain, so that's pretty cool. I get to speak Spanish with her <laughs> sometimes. And then we have Circle I'm from Denmark, so from Montenegro, and then um, Michelle from the Czech. And I just think that it's really cool to not be by myself here. Like, it's just all of us going through the same stuff, like culture differences and stuff. So it's just really cool to see how things are different in each part of the world. Last question I have for you before I let you go, Marina, is what are goals for you this season? Because it's your last go around, it's your last opportunity. So I'm sure there's some things you want to get accomplished before your playing days are done, at least at the collegiate level. Yeah, well my main goal is just to compete and just improve every single day. 
um, just give my best on the floor, be aggressive, provide energy, and I feel like it's just really important for me to be a senior and a captain because we have freshmen coming in, we have sophomores that are still learning, so I just want to set a good example for them this year. That sounds good. Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks. Marine Fernandez, one-on-one. -on -one. Fernandez scored a career-high 20 points against North Texas earlier this season and leads the team in rebounding as well. We're back to wrap up the show after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nodak Insurance Company and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Back to put a wrap on this week's show as we get you ready for the upcoming week. The North Dakota State men and women are back on their home floor. The men hosting Western Illinois on Thursday night at 7 p.m. on Midco SN2. The Bison women also hosting the Leathernecks the following evening on Friday at 7 o'clock. That contest is also on Midco SN2 as well. That's it for you this week. We'll be back next week for another episode of the Bison Basketball Show. <laughs>